Hello and welcome to On The Bench Extra. We've got another jam-packed show for you today. Joining me alongside my fellow presenter Tom Reid is Mighty Mariner himself, Andy Carr. Welcome to the show, Andy. Thank you. Coming up on the show today then, we'll be previewing Grimsby Town's playoff final against Bristol Rovers. We'll hear the thoughts from Nathan Arnold and John Paul Pittman. And we'll also get the views of Hull City manager Steve Bruce about Hull staying in the Premier League. But first of all, let us first go to Andy and we'll start with Grimsby and the game coming up. How do you see it going? Well, everybody knows it's you know being classed as the biggest game Grimsby's history. Um, it's going to be tight. I think you know both games this season, we drew 0-0 at their place and we had chances to win it. They beat us 1-0 here, so one goal in you know two games of football. Um, you know both teams deserve to be there. You know, respect to Bristol, respect to Grimsby. Um, I, I think we've hit momentum at the right time. Um, you know, we seem to have been getting sort of better, more consistent, and the performances come as as the season's gone on. Really, is it worrying though that Grimsby haven't scored against Rovers this season? Over both ties. Yes, that might play on the players' minds, and Hersey obviously knows that as well. So he's obviously going to try something different to change that. But like Andy says, you know, they've been the after Barnet, they've been the best two teams in the league. Um, the records say that. I like to say it'll be tight. It, I can't. I think Rovers will probably be the favourites, slight favourites. Um, but again, it's so tight you can't really call that. I think that's a good thing, though. I think, yeah. I think it's a good thing. Grimsby always a bet. You know, when we're the favourites, we always seem to struggle a little bit. Um, Pressure's on Rovers and to win it. Well, really. we, well, without doubt. And uh, I think what's an interesting fact is when we uh, went played Cheltenham back in, I think it was 2007 when Russell Slade was in charge, we beat Cheltenham home and away in the league, but then lost in the playoff final. Yeah. You know, so that, that's a good example. We beat them 3 0 at their place. So town yeah. as underdogs could be helpful. Oh, without without a doubt, I'd sooner have it that way around than the other way around. And how good, Andy, is this Grimsby Town squad? How good do you believe it is? You know, based on the league we're in, I think they're, they're as good as anybody in the league. Um, you know, the, the one thing that's been missing is you know is, is a bit of character and a bit of passion over the last few years. And the, this group of players have sort of they've, they've sort of they've pulled together, and the fans can see that and appreciate what they're trying to do and the. The thing, the thing with the players is they actually care. You know, they, they love the fans. You know, the, the, you like Sir Carl Magne and your Sean Pearsons, you know, and uh, you know uh, Nathan Nathan Arnold. You know, they've, they've all come together. They love the fans. They're giving it everything, and it's something we haven't seen at, down at Blundell Park for quite a few seasons. I have to say that's one of the things I've noticed about Grimsby. The team spirit seems to be really high this season. Reedy, looking at key players then for Grimsby in this game. Who would you say are going to be the standout players, the players that are going to make a real difference against Rovers? Well, McEwen's been solid all season, I think. He's obviously top keeper, so he needs to have a good performance on the day. Pearson was outstanding in the playoff, the two playoff games, winning everything in the air. Disley with his experience, and he can pop up and score a goal. He's like a leader on the field. And obviously, of course, Linnell really is, is the top of the spine. He, he can score the goals. It's his birthday on Sunday as well. I know. You know? Wow, yeah, could yeah, that be an omen yeah. then? Pat, I think it's his 26th birthday. 26th birthday and we were playing at Wembley and Lenny so he's had a bit of a mixed season with the fans you know most people know that I'm a sort of big fan of his and and, uh, and I, I just don't think he sometimes gets the you know the plaudits he deserves at times but it's set up I can see it now well hopefully he can get the birthday goal that he needs and imagine scoring at Wembley it'd be even better so um, we'll talk about the game a bit later on in the show guys thank you right having a look at the latest set of results then Hull's chances of staying up look slim after losing 1-0 at Burnley thanks to Danny Ings' goal. Robbie Brady twice hit the bar from free, kick, free kicks even, which might have changed the scoreline. After other results went against them, the Tigers find themselves in the relegation zone and two points clear from safety. That's the only game to look at this week. Mm. So This time of the season, it's always it the case. It is, yeah. It's difficult this time of the season. Hull's situation, Andy, it, it's looking a bit bleak now, isn't it? Yeah, we, you see, they've kind of gone the opposite way to your likes of Leicester. It's a bit like Grimsby in the opposite way, you know, in the Premier League, where Leicester got the momentum at the right time. And I think I think it's, it, it's, it's the spirit amongst the players. I, you know, whereas Hull kind of were doing okay and then have gradually gone the other way, Leicester kind of had the thing where, well... Nope to lose now. Let's you know. Yeah. Let's kind of go for it. You know, I think so. something like that. It is. It is going to be tough for Hull. I, 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 you know, if I was to, if I was to predict, I, I actually I think they will be the team. You know, the third team to go down. Right. Okay. So, really, would you agree with Andy on that? Well, I remember three weeks ago I said Hull will be going down. You know, for me, look at the fixtures. They're going down. I think two weeks ago I changed my mind after they beat Liverpool and Palace and said I think Hull will stay up. 
and now I have to agree with Andy again. If you know they've gone, they lost to Burnley. Burnley were, you know, they showed. And they're down anyway. They, they're so. down. You don't they deserve were, to stay up if you can't beat Burnley. You know, and and they showed a bit of spirit as, you know, a bit of pride. You know, where Hull, you know, to be fair, I, I, I didn't actually see the highlights or all the game myself, but you know, at the end of the day, they lost one nil to a team that's already relegated and they're fighting relegation. Yeah, it, yeah, you know, it isn't looking great really at all, well, is it? Well, Bruce has spent money on that squad, a fair bit of money on that squad, and we said at the start of the season, look, this this squad should be safe. Well, I think I said mid-table. I said about 13th. Yeah. I thought this... I, Between 10th and squad, 15th, I think, we said would be a, a good season. But they're not doing that great. Do you think the situation with the, the chairman, Andy, has maybe had an effect on things? I think I think if there's anything, you know, if there's a, if there's a slight goings-on away, I think it does... I think it must affect it. Because, obviously, Steve Bruce has been asked about it, um, you know. Um, but it's the old, you know, who's to, who's to blame? Do you blame the manager? Do you blame the players? Is you know because I actually quite like Steve Bruce. Uh, you know when when you see him, you know he he seems to know what he's talking about and everything. And it, it's it, you know obviously what, myself not being a Hull City fan, Hull City fans will probably have more of an idea as to whether it's the players not you know giving the role or whether it's uh, Steve Bruce's tactics. You know. Yeah, because I think at the start of the season, really, he was cited as potential England manager, and how how things can change over the course of a season. Oh, yeah, season's a long time in football. Um, and it is because, you know, Hull are off to a good start. You know, we they were, okay, they were playing Europa League qualifying, but you know, it, it looked promising this season. Um, but you know, it's not not to be. It's all gone downhill, and obviously, it's going to be remain on the last few games, and we're going to we're going to preview them. In the, you know, the show coming up, so we'll hope for Hull and hope that they can get some decent results in the final few games coming up. Right, moving on now then, um, Andy has kindly brought in some of his pictures from uh, Grimsby's famous victory at Wembley in 98. So Andy, can you just talk us about the, the, the scenes and your memories of, of that game? You know, it was, it was, you know, the two games we had in 98, both the auto windscreens and the league, it was just, you know, one hell of a, you know, one hell of a season. Um, the memories, you know, the first thing when you think of Wembley back then was the Twin Towers, which, as you can probably see, there's a you know we've got a, a picture stood when they were there, and it's a shame that they're not still there. Um, interesting fact, which I was telling you guys earlier, was the fact that we just moved house and suddenly come across um, a Mariners banner that we made back in 1998, and we found I found it whilst moving house, and that was you know took to Wembley. I think um, you've got some pictures of that as well, and it was actually on the town hall. With the with, you know the celebrations when they did the open top bus tour, um, so that was so, a good feeling for you. Well, to, to find <laughs> that you know you, you've got everything. You know you've got like, you've got Lenny's birthday, that sign coming out. It's it's all headed in the right direction. And you've you got me. Disley playing against his old club as well. Y well, you there's know. a lot there's a lot of things in there, isn't there, Reedy? Really? Yeah, <laughs> there is. You're right. Disley playing his against his former club. You know them them kind of guys normally go and score the winner. Uh, so '98, Reedy. What were your memories of that? Well, I was only a little boy. I was nine or ten years old, and all I remember is just the, the, the occasion itself, just going to Wembley. My first time, I think it was going to the old Wembley at the time. I went with my dad. Um, I, you know, I was geared up like you was, black and white or whatever. And uh, it just it was amazing seeing thousands and thousands of fans piling to Wembley to support the team. It just the atmosphere was just amazing. Incredible place as well. It was my one and only visit to, to the old Wembley for the LDV game. And uh, even as I was only young, about six or seven at the time, and it was just incredible. So how, how much do the Grimsby fans deserve it to be back at Wembley this year? I think what you got to think about is the the, the, the lost, you know, the, the generation of fans, the young lads coming through at the moment. Grimsby's got a great bunch of young lads, sort of 16 to 18, that have travelled all over this country this season. There's a huge bunch of them, and they've never had success. There's, you know, at least us guys can say we've, you know, we've we've seen 98, and you know that we've had a few, you know, we've had the the Newcastle game. Um, yeah. Sorry, not Newcastle. Some games. Of the, league yeah, games. the Spurs, the Spurs games, mm -hmm. some of the League Cup games. A lot of them haven't had that. You know, they've had good success in like the Scunny games and everything. But you know, this would top it off for them. And I think you know the fact these young lads have stuck by their local team, they deserve it probably more than most because at least we've got you know a bit memories to to look back on. They've had not a lot really. Yeah, exactly. They? they have. It's been a bit grim actually for the Grimsby fans. Hasn't some it? of them lads so. now haven't been born in '98. No, they? you know they've they've just looked back and I, I think out, out of anybody. Whilst all of you know, we've followed you know the Mariners for years. The young lads, I think, I'd love to see town go up. You know, for for the young group of fans and the young lads coming through. Can we expect more times like '98, Reedy? Then, do you think in the future? I think we can keep the squad together, regardless of what happens this weekend. Um, 
if it, you know, if you fail, you push for promotion again. Another Wembley appearance. If you're in League Two, you've got bigger league games, you've got nicer away trips, things like that. You go on a League Cup run, then FA Cup. You start, I think, is it a round later, or definitely things like that. You know, yeah. good times ahead. Thank you. Right, Greg's at it again. Uh, here is this week's head-to-head -head teaser. It's me first of all, so here you go. Rosinia, Figueroa, Chester, Bruce, McShane, Myler, Quinn, Al Mohamedy, Aluka, Jakupovic, Yelovic, And you can see Reedy's instalment in the second part of the show. Before we go to the break, here is this week's halftime teaser in keeping with the playoff theme. Which former Grimsby Town player scored in the 1993 playoff final for West Brom against Port Vale? We'll see you after the break. Welcome back to Extra. Now, this week's halftime teaser. Andy, did you get it? No, I, I guess that Dave Smith, but I don't think he's been stopped is. No, all break. You yeah. have, you've been stitched up here. So we'll give you the answer. It was Kevin Donovan oh, who also scored me. the winner for Grimsby in the 98 final against Northampton. So, still to come on today's show, we hear from Grimsby Towns, John Paul Pittman, and Nathan Arnold. And we also get the views of Steve Bruce. But before all of that, here's the second instalment of this week's Head to Head. Huddleston, Livermore, uh, El Mahamedy, uh, Corrin, Dawson, Chester, Curtis Davis, uh, McShane, uh, Ricketts, Guzan, uh, Myler, uh, Sagbo, uh, And you can see another head-to-head -head next week. Now, earlier on in the week, Nathan Arnold and John Paul Pittman joined Rob Underwood on On The Bench. These are their views. What's the buzz around the ground at the moment and around the club? Uh, it's absolutely, you know, through the roof. Uh, but, you know, we've got one more big game to go, so we keep our feet firmly on the ground and, uh, you know, look forward to what should be an exciting day. John Sunday. Paul, what about the preparation? Does it differ any in a, in a build-up to a Wembley game from any other game in the season? <coughs> Uh, it's always going to be slightly different in a sense because obviously it's, uh, there's a lot at stake. Uh, but one thing I've enjoyed about the preparation all season long, it's been consistent. You know, we've been doing the same things that have been working for us, and it's been, you know, it's easier as a player when you've got that sort of regime and you know what to kind of expect. So um, yeah, not much has changed, but obviously the focus is switched to this to this one match. Let's get this question out of the way first. Then, would you swap an automatic place for a day out at Wembley? If you, if you win, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you can only go to Wembley and win. But, um, I mean, they say it's the best way to go, don't they? But, you know, we, uh, we, we chased hard. We put a good run together near the end. But, unfortunately, we ran out of games. But, you know, uh, we, we're confident enough that we can do the business. It's ironic, isn't it? You played Bristol Rovers in the first game of the league season. Now you're playing them on the last game. Yeah. It's been a long old season. How, how difficult is it to get out of this conference? It's very difficult, you know, teams come down and, uh, you know, they think that they're going to go straight back up and that's not the case. I think Barnett did it in two seasons, which is only a few teams will have done that. Um, you know, so it takes some adapting, getting used to, um, but there's some big clubs in this league, you know, and um, it is a very tough league to get out of, but um, I think Grimsby and Bristol have by far been the most consistent and probably deserved to, to get in the I think the omens are good, you know. You scored your first goal of your career against Bristol Rovers, didn't you? Yeah, it was 4-3. Yeah, I can remember that. What do you remember about it? Um, I was only a young boy. Um, I think I was 17 at the time, 18, and uh, got my chance. And um, yeah, I think I played in the um, FA Vars or th something in the midweek, and then the gaffer pulled me up and gave me my debut against Bristol. So uh, I think I scored after 13 minutes. Um, 
So hopefully I can do that again Sunday. And Lanell John Lewis has got a birthday on Sunday as well. What a day to have your birthday. Yeah, I've told him not to uh, <coughs> not to forget the cakes. I've said that, it doesn't matter if it's Wembley or not, you've still got to bring your cakes in. So. Yeah, uh, so double celebration hopefully. Uh, what are your plans briefly? We're going to talk some more obviously about this. Uh, when are you going down? Uh, we're going down Friday. Yep. Yeah, going to um, soak it all up. But the main thing is to, to relax and, um, you know, stay calm. We're going to go and visit Wembley on the Sunday, uh, Saturday, and then take the pictures, videos, and do whatever you've got to do to get it out of the yeah. way. Sunday's obviously the game. Thank you to Nathan and JP there. Now moving on to Hull City. If they are relegated this season, Reedy, we'll start with you. Is Steve Bruce the right man to take them back? I think so. If, if he stays, which is a question in itself, but if he stays at the club, um, I think Bruce, he can do it, because, I mean, he's been there with Birmingham, I believe, at your know, club and that transition um, so I think yeah he's the right chap for it and obviously he's building a team there it's his squad that he's put together now so it'd be daft really to get rid of him now because he, he's built that up oh it's not been successful but he's built it up he knows where he wants to go with the club we've had some tweets from some Hull City fans uh, Mike Linwood has says depends on who stays and who goes whether they can come back up um, Nick Spencer said if they can hold on to all the players they can bounce back like Alan Partridge Bruce needs to get tough to be the right man does he need to be tougher? And Lewis Sudderby says, yes and yes, Bruce got us up once, he can do it again. Let's hope it doesn't come to that though. Andy, with a manager, if they take a team down, do you think that Steve Bruce would deserves another chance? It, again, it, it goes back to what we said before, as the off-field um, distractions been a key factor as to, you know, as to what's gone on on the pitch. Um, you know, I, I, th I think it, it would make a change for a you know a, a manager to stay, but we all know what football's like. And I personally, if we're talking about do we think he'll be there or not, I think he'll be gone. And I think there's always plenty of managers out there looking for work. And you know sometimes, so to speak, the, the chairman are too too quick to fire the bullet, so to speak. Would you would you keep Steve Bruce if you were chairman? Yeah, I, I, I just think, I think sometimes. The way football management is, I, I sometimes think a lot of managers don't, you know, sort of get enough time, kind of thing. If, if, if plenty of Grimsby fans, you know, one or two were friends of mine, they'd have had Hurst out the door at Christmas, yeah. you know, and look where we are. You know, most people probably wouldn't believe we'd got there. They'll say, you know, he still hasn't done the job. But at, at the end of the day, I think I think Steve Bruce and so some other him. managers should, yeah, keep him. Keep yeah. him. Okay, uh, Steve Bruce. Then here's his views ahead of the game against Tottenham this weekend. Well, we're hugely disappointed because because of the, 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 the build-up to it and the, and the couple of weeks we had before that, you know, the result against Palace and Liverpool. And, uh, but simply, if you don't perform and you let the whole thing get to you, and it's happened to, to, to great players, you know, the, the whole occasion gets to you and you forget how to play the game. How often do we say that? Um, so we will perform this week better than we did last week because we can't be any worse. And, uh, and I think they'll, they'll be better for last week in that respect that they'll be able to handle hopefully the situation better than what we did last week. It's a tall order obviously to get to Spurs and get a result. Is it possible that at this stage of the season given that they <laughs> seem to have been tearing off in terms of their results? Well, today? as I keep saying, we have, to, we have to perform to the level which will give us a chance. That's a fine. And uh, we'll give ourselves a chance. But, you know, West Brom won at Man U. Who'd have thought that? Sunderland won at Everton. Who'd have thought that? Leicester have won six, six out of seven. Who would have thought that? It shows you what the Premier League is, how difficult it is, how it can change. All we can do is give ourselves a chance. Can we come out fighting? Can we go and produce a performance? And, and get beat? if we get beat, we get beat with our boots on and it's not enough, then we have to accept that and the consequences that come with that. Um, however, I'm quietly confident that we will produce a performance which hopefully will get us a result. Well, I think that's second season syndrome. Nobody give us, we were Burnley last year, nobody mm -hmm. give us a cat and hell's chance of surviving. Nobody give us a, th a hope of staying in the Premier League. This year, there's been a bit of expectation of the players of the calibre we've brought in. And that expectation, if we're being perfectly honest, we haven't been able to live up to so far. So let's hope we can, uh, let's hope we can keep the thing alive and uh, and make sure we learn from where experiences are this year and, and carry on and move forward and still be a Premier League team. 
the views of Steve Bruce there. Now let's have a look at the weekend's games. Hull need a positive result against Tottenham if they stand any chance of staying up and hope results go in their favour. Their last win at White Hart Lane was in 2008. And as we've been discussing, Grimsby Town face Bristol Rovers in the Conference Premier Playoff Final at Wembley. We'll start with Hull City then, Reedy. The game against Tottenham, I said a couple of weeks ago, I think they'd get a result in this. And as we've been discussing before the show, uh, Tottenham haven't got a massive amount to play for. No, but we also said they'd beat Burnley, which <laughs> we, <laughs> we did, was wrong. We did, actually. Yeah. We was wrong, so I don't know anymore. <laughs> Football, what, what does it even mean? You're giving up predicting. <laughs> <laughs> as you say, Tottenham have got nothing to play for. That could be a bad thing because... Like we say, Andy, Tottenham just throw the kitchen sink at it. I think I think you sometimes find when people look at it and, and they'll say, "Oh, we, you know, oh, we could beat them because they've got no to play for." Sometimes that benefits the team that haven't got anything to play for because they're quite relaxed. They can go out, just play football. They're not worried about necessarily making mistakes because it doesn't matter. We saw that with Wrexham against Grimsby, didn't we? Yeah, they had right. nothing to play for and they looked like world beaters. Prime, prime example of that. They came in, they thought, no, we, we, we relax, we'll play a good bit of football and they, they look pretty good. I think, you know, I, I, I actually think it'll be a 2-1 victory for Spurs that game. Right, okay. I think that. The last uh, last result of this fixture, um, looking back to last season at White Hart Lane, Tottenham won 1-0, Reedy. Um, what what are you predicting for the for the whole score? I don't think it, the squads are not too dissimilar from them. Um, there's a few more faces in, in both sides, or different players have come to fruition. I don't know. I, I might go Tottenham 1-0 again, because the quality is still there from Tottenham, and I think Hull, they're the nervous ones. They've got everything to lose here. So I'm, I'm going to go with 1-0 Hull. I think 1-0 Tottenham. I'll go 1-0 Hull, being, being brave. Moving yeah. on to Grimsby as well then. Um, just quickly, obviously we talked about them earlier on in the show, Andy. What are your predictions in terms of a scoreline? I, you know, obviously I think we can win it 1-0. I think it'll be, I do think it'll be 1-0 either way, obviously hopefully in Grimsby's favour. But don't be surprised if it goes all the way to penalties. Penalties. Reedy, are you fancying that as I've well? I've been saying that the past week or so. Since that they, you know, the final was announced, I said, I've got a gut feeling it's going to go to penalties. It's going to be so tight. The teams won't be separated in 90 minutes. Uh, maybe a 0-0 or a 1-1. I think it's going to go yeah, to, to penalties, and I, I can't call it from there. Are we all going with the draw, then? Because I'm going to go with one all. Draw after 90 minutes. I'll go, I'll go 1-0 Mariners, actually. Well, no, I'll, change I'll, I'll, go, I'll change my mind. I'll go 1-0. <laughs> it's very positive you, Andy. Right, that is all we've got time for this week. Thank you very much to Tom Reid and Andy Carr for joining us. Uh, don't forget, you can also join On The Bench. That is Tuesdays at 8pm on Estuary TV. You've got Rach Chadwick this week. Uh, this show, obviously, 10am on Estuary TV every Saturday. Don't forget, you can also get in touch with us on social media. The details are on your screen now and also the email address. And you can follow our relevant stat man, Greg. It's at Take Stat. So thank you very much for joining us, chaps. Thank you. And until next week, it's goodbye. Very good luck to the Mariners.